Uh, welcome back. Uh, in the previous lecture, we were talking about the pathophysiology of primary hypertension. Now, let's talk about the pathophysiology of uh, secondary hypertension. Uh, obviously, secondary hypertension is basically a type of hypertension in which there is a secondary disease, a secondary condition that is ultimately leading towards the hypertension. And that secondary condition may be of uh, kidney, may be of thyroid, may be of uh, uh, some neurological condition. It could be any condition that can ultimately increase the uh, hypertension. So let's discuss some of the uh, reasons, some of the conditions for uh, that may develop uh, secondary hypertension. And the first that uh, I will talk about is renal artery stenosis. Renal artery stenosis. Stenosis uh, means getting uh, narrow. So renal artery is basically the artery that is supplying blood to the kidney. So if it, this renal artery gets stenosed, get narrow, what will happen? The blood supply toward the kidney will decrease. The blood supply toward the kidney will decrease. And inside the kidney, there is a nephron. And in the previous class, I explained that in the nephron, there are basically uh, efferent arterioles and efferent arterioles and on the efferent arterioles there are basically juxtaglomerular cells juxtaglomerular cells and those cells are responsible for secretion of renin but they will secrete renin in response to low blood volume when there is low blood volume in the body they will secrete renin juxtaglomerular cell will secrete renin so that the blood pressure can be the low blood pressure can be compensated but in this case blood pressure is normal blood pressure is normal what is happening basically blood supply toward the kidney is going down blood supply toward the kidney is going down why because the renal artery has been stenosed so as a result juxtaglomerular cell will may think that might be possible that blood pressure is going low so i need to release renin so that uh, blood pressure can be compensated but in this case they are thinking wrong because blood pressure throughout the body is not low blood pressure throughout the body is normal just blood supply toward the kidney is low toward the uh, juxtaglomerular cell is low but as uh, as a response of low blood volume they are supposed to secrete the renin so when there will be low blood volume they will secrete renin and renin will ultimately activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system it will increase the uh, angiotensin 2 uh, production and secretion so what will happen obviously ultimately blood volume sodium uh, potassium uh, sodium water retention will take place vasoconstriction will take place and blood volume and hypertension will increase all the detailed mechanism of renin angiotensin aldosterone system has been explained in the previous video please uh, you can visit if you want to understand more about this system well so this in this way renal artery stenosis is basically causing the hypertension okay second disease which uh, i would like to talk about is stress and sleep apnea sleep uh, well uh, whenever you are uh, in stress obviously your sympathetic system is uh, activated and whenever your sympathetic system is activated it means the level of catecholamines in your body the level of epinephrine nor epinephrine in your body will be high and they will be keep on acting on the beta receptor on the heart and alpha receptor on the blood vessels on by acting on the beta receptor on the heart they will increase the force of contraction they will increase the rate of contraction force of contraction will increase the stroke volume and uh, the uh, heart rate ultimately both of them will increase the uh, cardiac output and cardiac output will ultimately cause the high blood pressure similarly they will also catecholamine will also act on the alpha receptor that are present on the smooth muscle of the blood vessel and it will cause a vasoconstriction when there will be vasoconstriction ttr will go up and when ttr increases obviously blood pressure will increase so if the uh, during the stress because of over activation of sympathetic nervous system patient may suffer from the uh, hypertension as well okay so basically in this condition uh, hypertension but that was a secondary condition is causing the hypertension though so in this condition uh, hypertension will be called as secondary hypertension similarly sleep apnea sleep apnea is a condition in which patient may uh, suffer from difficult breathing while sleeping and uh, he may he may face this condition for 10 to 15 seconds for 10, 
there could be multiple reasons for this the opacity could be a reason some pulmonary obstruction can be reason but whatever the reason is whenever a person is feeling sleep apnea while uh, sleeping he face difficult breathing what can happen it may over activate its sympathetic nervous system as well okay when we are sleeping mostly over parasympathetic system rest and digest system is activated but in these conditions while sleeping their sympathetic system is still activated their sympathetic system is still activated and because of this over activation of sympathetic system these can, uh, patient can uh, move toward the uh, hypertension or secondary hypertension same by over activation or over release of catecholamines well there is another condition that is called as hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism thyroid disorders have a very close relation with the hypertension so let's discuss hypothyroidism uh, first and then we will talk about the hyperthyroidism well there are uh, not uh, detailed mechanism given in the uh, literature about the hypertension because of uh, thyroid disorder but few literature are explaining uh, uh, one or two mechanism that i am going to explain what happened in hypothyroidism you know that your thyroid hormone level is low obviously in hyperthyroidism oh sorry hypothyroidism thyroid thyroid hormone level is low it means t3 level will be low and you know that t3 have also some vasodilatory action vasodilatory action and when t3 level is low it means that t3 mediated vasodilation will not be uh, uh, happening if t3 mediated vasodilation is not happening it means we can say that there is relative vasoconstriction obviously there is no vasoconstrictory mechanism but uh, because of absence of t3 mediated vasodilation we can say that there is a uh, relative vasoconstriction so obviously it mean it will if there is a relative vasoconstriction it can increase the uh, total peripheral resistance and if total peripheral resistance increases blood pressure will increase second point is hypothyroidism can decrease the density of vascular beta receptor vascular beta receptor thyroid hormone basically increase the uh, vascular uh, beta receptors density vascular beta receptors density but in this case when thyroid hormones are low in concentration it means the density of beta receptor will go down and if density of beta receptor will go down at the parallel alpha adrenergic response will increase alpha adrenergic response will increase and when the alpha adrenergic response will increase what will happen vasoconstriction will take place and when the vasoconstriction will take place obviously TPR will uh, increase and blood pressure will increase. TPR will increase and blood pressure will uh, increase. Sorry. Okay. Now, point number three. It has been seen. It has been seen that uh, hypothyroidism is directly linked with the obesity. Hypothyroidism is direct, directly linked with the uh, obesity it has been explained by uh, cortesis at all they are researcher cortesis as all and uh, cortesis at all uh, there are a group of uh, researcher who explained uh, that hypothyroidism can be uh, linked with the obesity so obviously if hypothyroidism is uh, uh, are obese obviously the chances of getting hypertension is increase is high so in this they, these are the possible mechanism uh, in which hypothyroidism can lead to the hypertension now let's talk about the hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism can also lead toward the uh, hypertension the point number one which i will would like to talk about it as we know that uh, t3 cause of vasodilation so if uh, when the T3 uh, level go up, there is a continuous vasodilation. So what will happen? Uh, uh, systemic vascular resistance or total peripheral resistance will go down. Obviously, vasodilation, total peripheral resistance will decrease. When the total peripheral resistance will decrease, blood pressure will 
decrease and when the blood pressure will decrease to compensate the low blood pressure renal and your ras uh, system renin angiotensin aldosterone system will get activated and if this system get over activated it will continuously secreting angiotensin 2 and we know that angiotensin 2 can cause the hypertrophy of ventricles can cause the hypertrophy of blood vessels so it may, it can cause stiffness of blood vessel so if there is continuously uh, high level of angiotensin 2 because of the reflex action actually in at this time this ras system is basically trying to compensate the low blood pressure that has been uh, produced by the t3 t3 is a vasodilator it will cause a low blood pressure when there is low blood pressure to compensate that low blood pressure ras system will get activated and when ras system will get activated the angiotensin 2 level will go up and when the angiotensin 2 level will go up it will obviously uh, compensate that uh, low blood pressure decreased blood pressure but at the same time we know that angiotensin 2 can cause the ventricular hypertrophy hypertrophy of blood vessel it can cause the stiffness of blood vessel so that may result in the uh, development of hypertension there is another uh, condition uh, we know that uh, it's a basically uh, steroid hormone and steroid hormone can act in two way genomic and non genomic by following the genomic pathway it can increase the expression of some gene in the uh, uh, cardiac cells so it mean cardiac cells will start producing some proteins and those proteins may ltk ultimately cause the cardiac hypertrophy and this cardiac hypertrophy can lead to the hypertension as well okay uh, let me explain this point again t3 will uh, for example this is a cardiac cell and uh, intracellular t3 receptor will be present when t3 will act on it it will go into the nucleus and it will cause a transcription of some genes and uh, then uh, the messenger rna will be formed messenger rna will come out of the nucleus it will attach on the ribosome and some protein synthesis will taken place and these proteins can play important role in the development of cardiac hypertrophy so this this can also lead to the development of hypertension so there is a point number 3 uh, in which uh, in experimental animals it has been it has been seen that experimental animal who were suffering from the hyperthyroidism beta receptor in renal cortex more specifically level or level or number of beta receptor in the renal cortex were increased when the beta receptor in the renal cortex increases we know that beta receptor in the renal cortex basically increase the secretion of renin increase the secretion of renin from the kidney so uh, beta receptor in the renal cortex they will ultimately increase uh, renin secretion and when renin will increase renin angiotensin system will increase angiotensin 2 will increase and ultimately hypertension or blood pressure will taken place uh, now let's talk about another disease that is called as pheochromocytoma this is a basically cancer of uh, adrenal medulla adrenal gland you know we know that on the uh, uh, adrenal gland is present over the kidney and in the center of adrenal gland there is adrenal medulla and this adrenal medulla is basically responsible for the production of catecholamines epinephrine and norepinephrine if there is a cancer uh, in the adrenal medulla obviously the production of epinephrine norepinephrine will increase and if the production of epinephrine norepinephrine will increase uh, obviously they may ultimately lead to the hypertension by increasing the tpr when they will act on the alpha receptor and by increasing the cardiac output uh, when they will act on the beta receptor present on the heart Uh, hyperaldosteronism hyperaldosteronism is when there is uh, this central adrenal medulla is responsible for the secretion of catecholamines while adrenal cortex that is the outer portion of the adrenal medulla this outer portion of the adrenal medulla it is responsible for the production of aldosterone and if there is 
कैंसर इन द एड्रेनल कॉर्टेक्स ऑफ द एड्रेनल मेडुला ऑब्वियसली द सिंथेसिस एंड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एल्टोस्टेरोन विल इंक्रीज एंड व्हेन द सिंथेसिस एंड प्रोडक्शन और एंड रिलीज ऑफ एल्टोस्टेरोन हार्मोन इंक्रीज इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन अ डिटेल मैकेनिज्म दैट एल्टोस्टेरोन कैन इंक्रीज द सोडियम एंड वाटर रिटेंशन बाय प्रोड्यूसिंग न्यू प्रोटीन्स कॉल्ड एज एक्वाफोरिन इट हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन इन द previous video in which i am i am explaining about the ras please go and visit if you want to learn more about the mechanism of action of aldosterone well if there is sodium and water retention obviously blood volume will increase and when when blood volume will increase and diastolic volume will increase and diastolic volume will increase it means the ventricle will expand more when ventricle will expand more it means they will contract back with more power and stroke volume will increase and when stroke volume will increase cardiac output will increase Increase and ultimately blood pressure will also increase. There is another condition. Uh, well, let me tell you one more thing that this uh, uh, hyperaldosteronism is also called as low renin hypertension. The point is when uh, the blood pressure is absorbing. Oh, sorry, blood. Uh, sodium water retention is taking place again and again and the blood volume is high so obviously at that time the renin secretion will decrease because blood volume is in high i have explained in the previous part of this video that renin will increase in response to low blood volume but in this case blood volume is high why blood volume is high because of hyperaldosteronism so in this case renin secretion will decrease so this condition is also called as low renin hypertension so the last one is chronic kidney disorder like uh, glomerulonephritis in which there is inflammation of nephron and the secretion of ions and different uh, substances different toxic substances will not be taken place so there will be uh, increased blood level obviously when uh, the uh, concentration of ions and the concentration of water increases it is not excreting properly because of the kidney disease so the blood volume will increase and when the blood volume will increase ultimately it may lead to the hypertension again in this condition the renin secretion will decrease so both of these condition hyperaldosteronism and chronic kidney disorder they are basically called as low, low renin hypertension the point is in chronic kidney disease again uh, the secretion of salt and secretion of water is not taken place so blood volume will increase and in response to blood volume high blood volume renin is not secreted renin will be secreted in response to low blood volume so these are some conditions uh, that may uh, lead toward the development of secondary hypertension Uh, i hope you must like the video please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you may get notification for future videos and please don't forget to like and share this video as well thank you so much and uh, if you want to ask anything you can ask me in comments i will try my level best to answer your uh, question in my next videos thank you so much